Welcome to Italy, an ancient country with a rich history and colorful culture that has given us some of the most delicious food in the world. I'm here with Tuscanini, a brand that's dedicated to bringing those authentic flavors of Italy right to your table. With the help of some culinary artisans and amazing chefs, I got to explore Italy's diverse regions to discover where this overwhelming passion for culinary excellence comes from. Hey everybody, I'm your culinary host, Roberto Serini, and in this episode, we're going to the former Roman Jewish ghetto and try some delicious Roman Jewish street food with our local guide, Sarah Pavancello. And if you aren't hungry, trust me, you're gonna be. Let's check it out. Ah, Rome. From its possibly narrow streets to its sprawling piazze, this is the home of Vespas, tiny cars, and amazing food. Without a doubt, Rome is a foodie paradise, reflected even in its street art. While every neighborhood has its own character, there is one very special corner of Rome that has a rich culinary history not to be overlooked. So we met up with our local guide, Sara Povoncello, to discover all the delicious treasures the ancient Roman ghetto neighborhood has to offer. This is the street of the kosher restaurants, kosher sushi, kosher meat, kosher pasta, really whatever you are looking for is here. Now we get into this bakery and you are going to see how they make the typical pizza bianca and pizza rossa. The pizza made in this fornaio is made the same way they have been making it for millennia. Dough is naturally cold fermented in large volumes to create amazingly complex flavors. You can Smell the ferment. It's amazing, even raw. Then on a well-floured surface, the dough is rolled out almost impossibly thin, a style typically only found in Rome and extremely difficult to do, which is why I had to ask our pizzaiolo how long he's been at this. Ventanni. Ego proprio mestiere mio. Do adoro proprio. You can see the adoration in his work as he rolls out a canvas stretcher where the pizza will proof with just some olive oil and salt. When ready, it goes into an ancient oven built into the wall and becomes the ambrosia in just... 10-12 minutes. Comunque, meno 15, un quarto d'ora, pronto. E quante pizze farai ogni giorno? Eh, tanto. And see. <laughs> Each one an absolute masterpiece, where anything can be used as a topping to enjoy. After a few selfies, there was no question we had to try some. And for that, Sarah brought us to her favorite place. We are at Bona, that's a, a kosher pizza place. Uh, here we, you can get any kind of kosher pizza by weight. Uh, what I love to do with my family and with my friends uh, is uh, sharing many different slices uh, and uh, so I can eat as much as I can. But what I want to show you here is uh, the typical snack uh, that uh, locals uh, in Rome have uh, and it's uh, the pizza rossa and the pizza bianca. Don't you dare naming this focaccia because it's not focaccia and the crunchiest it is, the better it is for us. Among the meals uh, that they offer, you can see that there are the pomodori col riso so tomatoes filled with rice and this is one of the most typical jewish roman recipes for passover my husband always makes fun of me because the most typical uh, roman and jewish recipes always have oil salt and pepper that's all and then it's delicious so where these kids are uh, having the snack uh, is uh, the meeting spot uh, of our elder ladies uh, of uh, the former ghetto. If you are a teenager, Mozzai Shabbat, you come here. You believe that nobody is looking after you, but there is for sure somebody in the area having dinner in one of these kosher restaurants that can keep an eye. While there are spies everywhere, there are also restaurants everywhere. Proof that Jewish Roman cuisine is thriving in the eternal city of Rome and something that Chef Giovanni has a lot to say about. My family name, it means that my family is in Rome since 1555, when the Pope decided to tell to all to obligi all the Jews that live in the, in, the, in the Roman neighborhood to come in Italy to be closed on the ghetto for 500 years. That was a very bad period, of course, but in every, in every bad thing, there is always something that is good. 
For instance, the, the Jews that live in Rome, in a ghetto, they start to a tradition of food. It's so good that uh, the culinary culture of the Jews just became Italian and Roman. Carciofo alla Giudia, the Roman Jews artichoke, is something that every Roman feel like own, even if it's it from the Jews. And the nice thing is that uh, some of those recipes now are well known all over the world. Most of the Jewish Roman recipes uh, uh, date back the ghetto times. Uh, Jewish people were op or oppressed. Uh, most of them were very poor, second-hand ingredients, but they made them taste delicious. And the best example to me is the fried artichoke. And with everyone in agreement that the Roman Jewish artichoke is the hallmark of this unique culinary history, we had to try it. And Ristorante Nonna Betta does it better than perhaps anyone. First of all, the way you clean it. The correct way to do it is uh, by using this really sh sharp and really short knife. Yeah. What you do is slide this blade under each leaf. If you are not very delicate and very precise, you are gonna break the fibers in a way that it releases a lot of the iron inside oh, and wow. it oxidizes really fast. Wow. So once it's done, it looks like a, a blossom. and. Uh, it's ready to be thrown into boiling oil. The first time, it's for 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. It's what softens the artichoke. And when someone orders an artichoke, you're then throwing it back in a deep fryer, and it's one to two minutes. And that's what makes it crispy outside while it stays soft inside. In the ghetto, imagine it was not a nice place to be, so frying was a good way of cooking food that might not have been the best yes. and still making it yes. taste good. That's this it. was the compromise. That's it. But it stayed because it's delicious. It stayed it's, one it's, of the best things you can eat. It's funny how nowadays many of the best all around the world cuisine are what once was believed to be poor kitchen. Really poor, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, there's a lot of ways to eat artichokes. But I'm gonna say this is the best one. Eat the artichokes. Is this your favorite food? I love it. I love it. They're so good. I mean, favorite food is a big statement. I know. I, I, I would know. I wouldn't know what to choose, but it's definitely in, in the top five. I don't know. I could put this up. It's like a potato chip on the outside, and then inside it's like a fillet. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Having delighted myself on this ancient dish, it was time for a little dessert. So Sarah once again came to the rescue and brought us to one of the most characteristic Jewish bakeries in the world. So here we are in front of the most famous kosher bakery of Rome. Its name is Boccione. There is not even, uh, there is not even the need of the sign. Everybody knows where Boccione is. And this is the same family that runs the same business from almost 300 years. They don't share their recipes with anybody but with members of their own family and I totally understand, right? The most famous thing that they have is the pizza ebraica. Pizza ebraica is a giant biscuit that has inside almonds, pine nuts, raisin and candied fruit. Another typical dish that you should get here is the ricotta cheesecake with chocolate or with cherries with fresh ricotta. You see, I skip the line, don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Having obtained our treasure and retreating back to the piazza, Sarah says a little prayer before diving into the sweet delights. Which left her, well, understandably speech stricken. Give me one sec. Do I have chocolate on oh, my well, face? Well. No, okay. You are teasing me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, grazie mille. Yeah, it's uh, still hot. Huh? Mm. Please, take one. Please. Uh. I mean, even the sound guy couldn't resist this lighter than air cheesecake, a characteristic Jewish recipe, like others, that Sarah says comes from a very unique set of circumstances. From Middle Ages till 1890, this area was the area of the fish market of Rome. So, the fact that Jewish people had fish market next door to their ghetto doesn't mean that they could have eat any fish they wanted. Not at all. And it's not just because of cash route restrictions, it's because of the Pope's restrictions. 
and one of them was that we, as Jews, didn't deserve the big kind of fish, but just the small ones, anchovies and sardines. So, one of the most typical Jewish Roman recipe is the Ali Chotti con l'Indivia. Fortunately, Chef Giovanni has us covered as he goes over the right way to make this ancient and delicious recipe that is sure to delight. So, this is a, a very old recipe that is from the old ghetto, when the Jews was in the ghetto for 500 years and they cannot uh, use uh, anything than the poor fishes and poor vegetables. In the old ghetto area there is a sign on the wall that it's the maximum leg of the fish can Jews eat. So they start to eat small one. So here we have very, very, very simple. It can be amazing for the Shabbat dinner that you use to eat fish. Also because you can have it cold or hot. In this case, we are making mono portion, but you can do it also multi portion one. It's up to you. A little bit of salt, a little bit of ground paper, and some olive oil. No matter if you're making these single serving portions or decide to make a larger format for the family, the process is exactly the same. Layering escarole and fillets on top of each other with some salt, oil, and pepper. From there, they all go in a 350 degree oven for about an hour. Halfway through, you'll want to extract any cooking liquid that has formed and return them to the oven to crisp up. Only thing left to do is plate them up with a light drizzle of Tuscanini extra virgin olive oil over the top. Feel free to garnish them as you like, either with some fresh tomatoes and basil or even a twist of citrus to add a bit of brightness. Again, no matter if it's just you or a plate for the entire family, this unique ancient dish is amazingly simple to make and will surely be enjoyed by everyone connecting present flavors to an amazing history. Bon appetito.